it's like, oh my God, you know, dogs and cats are living together. And, you know, like I said, aren't there more important things we should be talking about rather than if, if I dress like a slob? What's going on, everybody? Wired here. I hope you guys have an excellent, wonderful day. And I'm back once again to talk about uh, Mr. John Fetterman. Now, I want to preface this video by saying this is not representative of the collective intelligence of the state of Pennsylvania. I am from Pennsylvania. I voted in the 2022 elections. And I would like to say I'm very sorry for the fact that somehow this man, uh, Mr. John Fetterman, got elected. Now, if you don't know, uh, John Fetterman has a lot of cognitive issues. He suffered a stroke back in 2021. And he's still recovering from it. And possibly, maybe, if I want to give him the benefit of the doubt, that could be why he cannot seem to put on a button-up shirt and a blazer. And, you know, a pair of long pants. I'm not sure. I have no idea. However, I do agree with him on a couple points by saying this is not extremely important in the grand scheme of our, you know, republic that is the United States of America, and that stuff like this is a complete distraction from the actual issues that are at hand. 100% agree. 100% agree with John Fetterman. And that's why I definitely do not think he should be doing it. Just put on a button-up shirt if you need a little bit of help with it. Uh, you know, have your wife buttoned up for you or one of your staffers buttoned up for you. And they can slip on the sleeves for you, all that stuff. I'm sure you can wear a shirt. I mean, I do it every day. A lot of people do it every day. I would think 99.9% .9 of people wear, you know, shirts every day. But regardless of what I think about this and how he's shaming the state of Pennsylvania, which is uh, my home, which again, apologies for, let's get into this uh, news article here about John Fetterman's views on the dress code that has now been officially reinforced within the Senate and the House by saying that, yes, you must dress up to attend. Washington, not over the debt or even immigration, but about what to wear to work. ABC's Lana Moise reports on the dress code dilemma in the U.S. Senate. This morning, some senators up in arms over Majority Leader Chuck Schumer's recent move throwing out the dress code on the Senate floor. 46 Republicans have now sent a letter urging Schumer to reverse course, calling the change misguided. I've never seen um, civility enhanced or a sense of decorum enhanced. Uh, by dressing like a slob. It used to be that people looked at members of Congress and at least looked up a little bit. N now all they have to do is look down. Uh, it's, it's disgusting. Schumer says it's about choice, saying now senators are able to choose what they wear on the Senate floor. I will continue to wear a suit. It comes after Pennsylvania Senator John Fetterman, a Democrat, faced criticism for wearing gym shorts and hooded sweatshirts. They're just like, oh my God, you know. Dogs and cats are living together, and you know, like I said, aren't there more important things we should be talking about rather than if if I dress like a slob? Fetterman has previously voted from doorways to skirt previous Senate attire rules. I think it's a good thing, and uh, but I'm going to use it sparingly. The move hotly debated on the View. I work at Capitol Hill for many years, and when constituents came in, they would even dress dress up. They'd be like, "This are these are chambers yeah. that Abraham Lincoln walked in, John McCain, John F. Kennedy, Lyndon Johnson." Mm -hmm. There's a hallowed sort of ground to it. And I too walked all of those halls and I, I walked into the Supreme Court building and, and I walked into federal courtrooms all the time. And you don't wear jeans and you don't wear hoodies and you don't wear what you would wear coming out of the gym. Yeah, now I can't say it's very often that I actually agree with the women on The View because I think they have some of the most egregious, outrageous takes on television to this day, and if they were uh, supporting the Republican Party, I think they would have definitely been off the air years and years and years ago. However, since they spew Democrat rhetoric, apparently that's totally fine. However, I gotta... <coughs> I gotta say I, I agree with, with Sonny Host. Sonny Host in here. Excuse me. Excuse me. I gotta say I agree with Sonny Host as that... Um, <coughs> Mm. that John Fetterman 
representative of my state of Pennsylvania, and again, I apologize, not only for Pennsylvania, but for the United States of America, that this guy should really just be able to put on a suit and a tie and just attend Congress like every other person has done since the foundation of our great country. John Fetterman's hoodie and gym shorts on the Senate floor are roiling D.C., but a fashion historian says shorts have been getting under people's skin for decades. Senator Chuck Schumer quietly re relaxed the U.S. Senate's dress code, supposedly to accommodate Senator John Fetterman's desire to wear hooded sweatshirts and gym shorts. The backlash was swift. Now listen, I've had uh, a couple of different jobs in my teenage and adult lifetime. My first job was at McDonald's. And I worked there as a cashier. And I was 16 years old. I had to wear a uniform that had a little M on it. And because that was representative of the company. When I got more away from that, I got a job in manufacturing as a blue collar worker in a battery plant. I had to wear a uniform because that was represented their company. Now, what I don't really understand here, and I guess maybe I'm a little slow, but at both of these jobs, not that they were very high positions, very high up, but I had to wear uniforms. I had to represent the company. John Fetterman, however, can just be a complete slob. And I know that the Senate, Senate has uh, reversed this, and I'm, you know, a little bit of hope in humanity restored for that, but why would you not think that you have to look your best for the role that you're representing? Why do you think that you can just go in and look like a slob? It's absolutely astounding. Apparently, it was enough to compel senators to unanimously pass a resolution on September 28th, 2023, Man in a coat, tie, and slacks for men on the Senate floor, which I'm going to remind you, is not what we should be focusing on. There are a lot of other things. Think about the people of East Palestine, Ohio. Think about the people of um, Lahaina in Maui, uh, Ho Hawaii. A lot of people who actually need help were actually, you know, dealing with this recession. And yet, John Sinema says this isn't a big deal. He says it's not a big deal. Shouldn't be focused on this. And my response, yeah, okay. I'll agree with you on that. It's not a huge deal. But if it's not, then just put on a suit and put on a tie and put on some slacks and just represent your state, my state, like an actual individual. You're not going to do any good anyway. I know you're not because I've seen your campaign. And I've seen your speeches, and I know you're a 49-year-old Nepo baby who never had an actual position until you try to represent the blue-collar workers. You don't represent blue-collar workers because you've never had a blue-collar job. So stow that, go back and get more money from your very rich parents, and now you're in the Senate. I'm not angry. I'm just disappointed. As a fashion historian, I've heard this tune before. It's the same one sung by college administ administrators in the late 1950s when we wanted to wear pants to the campus cafeteria. And I could hear the chorus of a photo of office managers who wanted to ban polo shirts in the early 1990s just as casual Fridays revolutionized what people wear to work. The people living through these changes often consider them, them devolution rather than evolution. Well, no, that's... All right. I'm just going to end this article here. It is devolution. It's complete devolution. There's supposed to be, there's decorum in most industries. In most jobs that you have, you, you have a dress code or you have a uniform. And you're supposed to adhere to it. I know John Fetterman has a lot of struggles. I know he, he had a couple strokes. I know he's not all cognitively there. And I'm going to say, I'm not, I would never hate on anybody for that. I feel very bad for this man. I really do. I think instead of trying to represent Pennsylvania and trying to go through all the struggles of actually being a force for, you know, 
I guess good positivity within our, you know, Congress. He should probably go home and just take care of his own mental health. I'm not the one trying to push him to do this stuff. And I would never do that. I say the same thing about Joe Biden. That's why I can't get monetized on YouTube anymore. But if you're going to represent our great nation, the least you can do, put on a suit, put on a tie, pair of slacks, and look presentable. Look like you're not right off the street. That's all I'm asking. I think that's uh, not a terrible thing for the American people to ask. Anyway, that's all I got, though. Leave a like on the video. Grab the channel if you haven't already. Thank you for listening this long. I will catch you guys all in the next one. Later. This is my message to the, the, CEOs, the CEOs is, you know, it's $74 million, you know, collectively earning that. You know, how many yachts can they need, you know, you know to, to, yacht, to water uh, ski behind it? Ooh.